So about um, three years ago, I had a brother in Christ send me this book called The Secret. And um, I never actually, it wasn't a book, it was a movie I think he gave me. He gave me the movie The Secret. He just sent it to me like three years ago. And I never actually watched it. I actually ended up throwing it away eventually because um, I just automatically just felt in my spirit as the bride that it just had a new age type of vibe to it. I didn't even know anything about the movie. And I was just, the Holy Spirit just never gave me like a um, check in my spirit to watch it. I just felt like it was some type of jargon like that. So I tossed it. But I've heard the law of attraction floating around um, a lot. And one of the things I've been interested in lately is just like different types of sciences and frequencies and things like that. Um, from an innocent standpoint, not anything weird. But, um, you know, searching things like that on YouTube, you'll come across videos like the law of attraction and all that other good stuff. The Rice Experiment. And um, I just wanted to ask the father like how he felt about that because um, I don't think all of these things are bad. Like, um, And when I say that, I mean... <sighs> I know there's a lot of um, innocent knowledge in the sense of science and how science works and stuff when it comes to our words and our intents, um, different vibrations and frequencies, because I always see in my videos that everything we do and say does communicate to the spirit realm, and that is true. You know, the Bible itself does say that life and death is in the power of the tongue. So I don't think that those things are evil necessarily, but I do think that um, we can cross the line. We're trying to take some of that knowledge and manipulating it to use it for our own benefit outside of the Lord's will and his uh, authority. <laughs> so I'm still a baby with stuff like that, but that's just something I've been interested in a lot lately. I share that with the Lord and I personally ask him to teach me as far as watching any content on it or, you know, doing research and studying for yourself. If that was something that you were interested in for your own well-being and for your benefit, you can always just ask the Holy Spirit to confirm or deny what is and is not acceptable to him. So I was watching some videos about the law of attraction a few minutes ago just to kind of see what it was. Um, I already kind of inherently knew. I was like, this sounds like, you know, I've watched some videos about it in the past. It just seemed like, you know, people are pulling these manifestations. Basically, it's all about manifestation, how to get things to manifest in your life, how to draw and attract what you want and what you desire. And I think when I had watched videos about it in the past, my initial thought was just, um, well, if you're getting things to manifest like that and it's working, it's coming from somewhere. So you didn't get it in Jesus name. So who else did you get it from? <laughs> you know, so I already, you know, automatically figured that it's probably coming from some demon principality and people don't know what they're doing, you know, um, unless you're just directly involved in witchcraft and you probably know that you are getting it from a demonic or a spiritual power or being those people who just practice the law of attraction in and of itself. Um, I don't think they know where it's coming from. I think they're just taught on like a molecular uh, structure and a spiritual format frequency wise how things work um, and how we can receive certain things in the spirit realm and such and such. Now, I don't think the science part is wrong. I think that that is true. I think that works. But my thing is you have principalities. Principalities are higher ranking demon spirits over literal boards and like um, courting. So. I'm not saying the science part doesn't work, but these things are being released by some authority figure. So if it's not the Lord, it has to be some other kind of Lord is all I'm saying. So it's witchcraft either way you want to look at it. It's not saying the science is wrong, but somebody's governing that, you know, that realm of things. If it's um, it makes me think about the scripture where Jesus said, you know, that he who enters through the back door or comes in some other way is a thief and a robber. So my thing is the science could be true, you know, frequency wise, vibration wise, all that good stuff that they talk about. You know, I would not mind learning it at all. I'm really into stuff like that. But if you didn't go through Jesus to get it, he already told you it makes you a thief and a robber. So if you didn't go through Jesus, you went through some other force. And that force is the one that's releasing those things to you for it to be manifesting. I don't believe that things cannot manifest. I just think that there is a spirit governing certain realms that uh, releases things to be manifested because God is sovereign. God is the one, you know, overall supreme who decides who gets what and when they get it. So it's not just coming out of thin air. You're not going to have a whole world of, you know, wicked fallen humanity using the law of attraction, getting every single thing that they want. It does, it does not work like that. Okay. There's uh, 
there's higher powers involved when it comes to things like that. So um, I just asked the father about it. I just, I was just like, Lord, how do you feel about the whole, you know, law of attraction thing? Um, I was more so coming from like a bridal perspective uh, with us being the bride of Christ, you know, the spiritual bride of Christ. Um, is this something that we have access to being um, just our identity, you know, being a part of you or being in you? Do we have permission to manipulate matter in that way? You know, because the Bible does say that, you know, we have all spiritual bl blessings stored up for us in heavenly places. So that's a sense of manifestation, you know, where the things are before you receive them. So I was just genuinely asking the Lord um, his heart on the matter, you know, whether it was co for correction's sake or whether he would, you know, elaborate on it a little bit. You know, is that something that Christians have permission to do? Do we not have to go through you? Do we not have to ask in Jesus name all the time if we can, you know, receive little details of things like that? And he took me to Ezekiel chapter 13. And you can read the whole passage. It actually goes from Ezekiel 12, verse 12, all the way to Ezekiel 14, verse 4. But this particular passage right here, and this one right here is the one that stood out to me. And um, I'm going to read it. Ezekiel 13. And the word of the Lord, which is um, Yahweh, actually, came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy and say you unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts hear you the word of the Lord thus saith the Lord God woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing O Israel your prophets are like the foxes in the deserts you have not gone up into the gaps neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord they have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord says, and the Lord has not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Have you not seen a vain vision, and have you not spoken a lying divination, whereas you say, The Lord saith, albeit I have not spoken? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because you have spoken vanity, and seen lies. Therefore, behold, I am against you, saith the Lord, and my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the, hand, the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. <sighs> so, it's pretty clear how he feels about that, <laughs> okay? Now, what stood out to me immediately is verse two, where it says, son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy. So the Lord is declaring a decreeing a, um, judgment sentence against prophets in Israel, people who are prophesying and say you unto them that are prophesying out of their own hearts. So very interesting. Um, so father obviously didn't answer my question about the law of attraction because the main thing about the law of attraction is people speaking. It's almost like a sense of spell casting. You know, you are drawing and attracting and speaking to the universe what you want to happen. You're using intention, you're using all this stuff. And um, now I think those things are definitely, I agree with it scientifically in the sense of through the Lord, because the Bible does say that when you ask Jesus for something in his name, you have to believe that you have received it. So it's very similar. I think the only error is that people are doing it in a roundabout way. They're not going through the Lord to get these things. Therefore, they're not submitting themselves to his authority and giving him the right to say yes or no. And I think that's where the whole cheating witchcraft thing comes, comes into play, because that is a spirit of witchcraft. That's a spirit of rebellion. You don't want to know from God. So you found another way to get it, <laughs> you know. So prophesying prophesying is uh it's 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 speaking forth in utterance and um when we hear prophesy obviously we already have like a um, biblical connotation because that's what the word is most familiar with you know it's somebody who's an oracle for the lord they're speaking you know what the lord has placed on their heart or placed in their spirit to say they are a spokesperson for god but um the there are false prophets that the lord is addressing here and basically what it means to prophesy is exactly what people who follow the law of law of attraction do they speak to the universe they're declaring they're making affirmations they're saying what is going to happen what they want to happen future wise so he's speaking against them and he specifically said in verse two and say you unto them that prophesy that are doing the declarations they're doing the decrees they're doing the affirmations and all that stuff that follow uh, no, he said out of their own hearts out of their own hearts 
Now that's a big thing because, um, once again, following something like the law of attraction, Jesus is nowhere involved in this. You're not going to watch a law of attraction video unless they try to mix Christianity with witchcraft. They're not going to mention anything about you going to the Lord in prayer, requesting something from him and letting him dictate whether he wants to give that to you or not. Because the scripture also specifically says that if you abide in me as I abide in you, if you abide in my word, you shall ask whatever you want and I will give it to you. So you're not just going to be requesting and making all these affirmations and stuff and demanding things to happen to the universe and just get it. Okay. The Lord is the main authority figure. He's the ultimate and final say in authority figure of what we will get and when we get it and when we don't get it. So, um. He said they're prophesying out of their own hearts, meaning they've taken it upon themselves to put themselves in that position to receive these things, however, in whatever way they get it. That is those who follow the law of attraction. They're following their own hearts. They didn't ask Jesus what uh, his destiny for them was. They didn't ask the father. They didn't even think they don't even care about what the father's will may be in this situation. They just skipped right over him and jumped right into, you know, uh, doing scripting and writing these law of attraction affirmations and they're expecting these things to manifest. So that is witchcraft. Verse three, thus saith the Lord God, woe unto the foolish prophets. He calls them fools that follow their own spirit. Once again, they're not only following their own hearts, they're following their own spirit. You have a spirit to follow. It's the Holy Spirit, not your own. And um, verse six, they have seen vanity and lying divination saying the Lord says and the Lord has not sent them and they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word now obviously in context he is actually talking about false prophets that were going to prophesy in his name in the nation of Israel but in the sense of him answering my prayer what I saw with that was um the emphasis on how it says they have seen vanity and I just talked about what vanity, uh, different definitions for vanity in my Proverbs chapter one uh, video Bible study I was doing. And I noticed that with the law of attraction, um, it's almost like you mimicking what the father did. They always like to reference Genesis and scriptures in Genesis when they're talking about the law of attraction, like how the Lord foresaw and he thought this before he actually fleshed it out, before he actually created something. He saw it, which that's true. I do think that there is an um, element to foreseeing something when we uh, are believing Jesus for something. That's very important. You know, that's how you walk in the room of faith. I have older videos talking about that, but that's through Jesus. OK, that's not outside of Jesus. So they have seen vanity. You're imagining these things in vain. You're creating all of these, you know, different elements of your future and what you want to happen in vain. It's not through the Lord and lying divination. And I looked up a divination meant and um, if you look it up in Blue Letter Bible, it's not going to give you an actual definition. But if you look it up in like a dictionary app, it says divination is the practice of attempting to foretell future events or discover hidden knowledge by occult or supernatural means. This sounds just like the law of attraction. OK, if they're not um, if they're not trying to find out what their future is, uh, it seems like they're taking control of their future and they're telling the universe what their future is going to be. And they're trying to get that manifested. So that would be divination. And they're discovering it by hidden knowledge, by occult or supernatural means. I do think that could be the, um, the knowledge that they're learning through, um, like I said, about different uh, frequencies and vibrations and how all these things work, the rice experiment. I don't think those things are inherently evil in and of themselves. But when you try to manipulate those things outside the spirit of God, that can become witchcraft. So that is divination. And it also says perception by intuition and instinctive foresight. So lying divinations saying the Lord says now uh, what I get with that part saying the Lord says, obviously, they're not doing these things in the name of Jesus. If you're doing that, you need to stop. <laughs> Do what I did and ask uh, the Lord to reveal to you how he feels about that before you start doing Christian witchcraft and don't know it. And he will give you scripture like he gave me. But what I got with that, um, the Lord says, I just see it as uh, just what I said a few minutes ago, just people who are following the law of attraction. They are assuming the position that God himself is supposed to hold. You don't get to dictate what your destiny is going to be. Um, you can't through your actions and you violating the laws of God. But um making yourself God and you speaking to the universe and telling the universe what it's going to do for you to serve you outside of, uh, outside of the Lord. I could see that as a form of you, um, 
being in a position to say the Lord saith, because that's a, that's a role that only he is supposed to assume, not you. That's his position, not your position. So they have seen vanity through their imaginations and what they purpose or what they want to happen, what they're purposing to happen um, mentally. And then they speak it in lying divinations, saying the Lord saith, and the Lord has not sent them. Meaning he's not the one governing that realm or that action or you doing it that way, going that route. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. What I got from that is just um, what your expectation would be after you send something like that out into the universe. As they would say, you're expecting the people that are going to be involved in the manifestation, whoever these uh, these spirits are going to use to serve you and what you commanded or what you've sent out that you want to be done. So, um, they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. So if you're confirming it, when the Bible talks about something being confirmed um, or how the testimony of Jesus was con con was confirmed, they usually talk about uh, signs and miracles. So one way that I can confirm that I'm from God is that I will be doing uh, signs and miracles and healings in his name. So you can confirm the word that way that it is true. There's going to be evidence. Um, have you not seen a vain vision and have you not spoken a lying divination? Whereas you say, the Lord saith it, albeit I have not spoken. In other words, I'm the authority figure. I didn't know nothing about this. Y'all never came to me through my son's name and requested any of this stuff from me. What is going on up in here? <laughs> okay, so you did this outside of me. It's, it's no different than, you You know, God is a father. So that's like us, you know, his kids. Uh, we know we're supposed to go through dad and ask him for everything, right? You need to ask permission to do different things or even in the sense of just pleasing him. And not wanting to dishonor him as a father, you know, we in the back room, you know, the door locked and we sneaking and snickering, you know, uh, whispering, making sure that he don't hear what we planning to do and go outside and you go sneak out the house or something, you know. And that's exactly what his tone would be if he was to come and discover that, you know. Um, have you not seen a vain vision and have you not spoken a lying divination? Whereas you say the Lord saith it, albeit I have not spoken. You didn't run this by me. That's rebellion. That is a spirit of rebellion, a spirit of witchcraft, and that is disorder. That is not how things work in the kingdom. You don't do anything outside of God, and you will not receive anything outside of the name of Jesus Christ, period. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. If you don't go through him and you go through some other means, he already told you you are a thief and a robber. You don't have good motives, and you know... Those who do want to practice the law of attraction, because I was already thinking about these things uh, within myself, you know, I just didn't have a piece about it. I wanted to ask him about it just to see. But uh, the Holy Spirit already was like, nah, <laughs> he was like within me just kind of pushing like, nope, nope, that's not the Lord, you know, because it's kind of like, well, what is your issue with going through the Lord? I mean, what you know, what is your problem with that or what issue do you have with that, you know, unless your motives are not pure? You know, um, I was just thinking about it from like a bridal standpoint, you know, well, if we're the bride of Christ and especially what the Bible teaches us about women and the role of uh, wives, you know, we are to be submissive to our husbands and Jesus is our first spiritual husband. So he's your master. That means that you have to go through him for everything, especially as the weaker vessel. You are a woman. So God forbid a woman's trying to do the law of attraction. You way out of order, okay? That's like Jezebel to a whole nother level. That's just straight witchcraft, okay? It's witchcraft, period. But I was just thinking about it from like a bridal standpoint. I said, it just doesn't make sense, you know. I feel like I'm disrespecting or dishonoring the Lord as my husband and as my master if I try to do something like that. And like, I'm not consulting him because that's what you do as a wife. You consult your husband and your master about what your intentions are. You know, and it's kind of like, well, if you didn't run it by me, and you didn't consult with me about this. We're supposed to be in this together. You know, you walk as I walked. OK, you do what you see your father doing. You hear what you speak, what you uh, hear your father speaking like Jesus did. Why didn't you consult me about this? Why didn't you come to me or come through me? You know, what, what are your motives? What issue do you have with coming to me in prayer about this? You know, for me to affirm and for me, I could have given you that, you know, so it's kind of like, you know, what what exactly are these people's um you know what, what is your motive for doing something like that it can't be pure it can't be supportive of the kingdom and um it can't be glorying the father uh keeping him first in your heart if you feel the need to go around him or take a back door route to do something like that 
And uh, one thing Father actually has been encouraging me about, he's been leading me to um, a passage in Esther, just about different blessings and things that he wants to do in my life and just encouraging me as a daughter is um, the scene where Esther uh, went to the banquet with the king. And um, as soon as he saw, uh, as soon as he saw her, scripture says that uh, she found favor in his sight. And um, he uh, asked her whatever her request was, it shall be given to you up until the, uh, the half of the kingdom. So father has even been encouraging me, you know, God wants to bless us. He's not a father that's just being so restrictive. If God's being restrictive about anything, it's because he's trying to protect you from something. Other than that, he'll give you anything as long as you respect his role in your life and his authority. OK, you're not going to don't expect to get something from God if you want to disrespect and dishonor his role in your life and who he is. You're not trying to dethrone God here. You're never going to dethrone God. He's not going to fall off the throne ever. He always will and always has had a final say over what is going to happen in your life. And you will never take that away from him. Now you can walk in a spirit of rebellion and try to go get it yourself. It's not going to work out for you. This is why he says that they're speaking these things in vain. You know, and uh, the law of attraction, I mean, my thing is you may you may see some results. You may get a little bit of success, but you didn't get it through Jesus. So it's a curse. And that's uh, I didn't get a chance to finish doing Proverbs chapter one that day. I was going to say a little something like that. I don't know when I'm going to finish it. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's the passage that he led me to. He makes it clear that he is against people who are doing this. So. Any Christians who are following the law of attraction need to repent. Um, and once again, I'm not saying the science about all these things are wrong or that, you know, those things are, you know, not good to learn. I do think there's temptation involved with stuff like that. You know, it's tempting for you to want to do these things on your own once you do start learning that knowledge. And I think that's why the Lord really didn't want Adam and Eve eating from the, um, the tree of uh, the knowledge of good and evil. I think I said this in a video like two years ago. I don't think the Lord even had a problem with us ever knowing those things. I think he just, um, he wants to be the one to determine how much we learn. And I, I think the Lord would eventually uh, give that same knowledge that was on that tree to those who are intimate with him because he knows that he can trust you with it. He's not going to give a shotgun to a baby, okay? So I don't even think it was a situation where the Lord was trying to keep that knowledge from us, you know, like they like to say, you know, or he um, he doesn't want us to have it. I think he does want you to have it. He just wants you to have him first. He wants you to prove that you're a submissive and a faithful wife. You know, um, obviously, I can attest to my relationship with him. He's taught and shared a lot of things with me. So you only do that with people that you're intimate with. So I don't believe in people going and getting knowledge like that outside of the Lord. That's his stuff. It's it's a form of stealing to me. I think that's why he says that you're a thief and a robber. If you try to attain, a, you know, occult knowledge or spiritual knowledge and a secret things like that uh, through some other means, except him, you're a thief and a robber because that th that knowledge belongs to him. That's his stuff. So no, I'm not going to give that kind. I'm not going to give something, you know, special and valuable like that to my enemy because my enemy does not have my, um, does not uh, have my well-being, you know, or that they're not out for my good. They're not seeking my good, basically. They have their own intentions and their own agenda, what they want to do with those things. So the Lord's not going to give that information to people who don't know him and who don't have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit himself is a valuable prized possession that's abiding within believers. And um, those believers obviously already belong to the Lord if they have the Holy Spirit in the first place. So you're not going to have people that don't care anything about Jesus learning any of these valuable spiritual revelations that the Lord shares with his church. Cause he does not know you. You're not his people. You're not his friend. You know, you're not intimate with him. So the people are stealing the knowledge of God through the occult. And you are going to have to pay a heavy price for that on judgment day. If you don't repent from it. So no, I don't think the Lord has any problem teaching us. I ask the Lord uh, to teach me a lot of stuff. I'm not going to say what I ask him because that's my business. That's between me and him. But I love stuff like that. I love knowledge. I love learning spiritual things. Um, even um, some things from um, an astrological standpoint, I would love to learn because the Lord created these things. But you have to be careful which what source that you go to. It's very tempting to uh, deviate away from the Lord and his lordship. When wanting to learn about those things so i just tell him like i'm interested in it and um i just let him just kind of reveal to me in his own time you know or maybe he'll lead me to something that's an appropriate you know source of where i can learn about those things and give him more praise and glory and honor for it i love stuff like that it makes you appreciate the lord much more when you uh do get into detail and stuff like that but 
the thing is, you can't put that in the hands of fallen man. Okay, <laughs> they're gonna do. They're gonna do exactly what they're doing now. They're misusing and they're abusing it. Okay, you give pure knowledge. It's, it's no different than how the word says. You know, uh, when uh, Paul was speaking about the law and how the law cannot exactly make us perfect, but there was nothing wrong with the law in and of itself. The law was holy and good. Well, it's the same thing with knowledge. I think that occultists will even tell you that um, knowledge is neither the spiritual knowledge is neither evil nor good. It's all about the person who's using it. I completely agree with that. Um, nothing is wrong with the knowledge itself. The person who possesses it and who made it, uh, who holds it, is holy. So I just would not put something like that in the hands of a wicked man. Somebody who has a wicked and impure heart. If they start learning about how they can, you know, affect and manipulate people and their emotions and their mind through different frequencies, obviously somebody with a wicked heart is going to use that to their advantage and probably p try to put a spell on somebody to control them. That's exactly what the government is doing. So the knowledge is not bad. It's the people and what they want to do with the knowledge that makes it bad. OK, so this is why the Lord does not permit everybody to know these things. He will only give that to people he knows for a fact that he already knows personally and intimately and that he can trust with information like that. Period. And I, I think there's some stuff he may never even tell us because it's just it's just about, you know, ranks and it's about um, your role under him as a bride and you being submitted to him. Some things it's not your business to know. It makes me think about how Jesus told uh, was it Peter. I think it was one of the disciples that were questioning him about like uh, his return. And I think the Lord told him something like, it's not your business to know, you know, the times and the seasons. So I was like, dang, <laughs> like he just straight up told him, like, it's not for you to know. So if the Lord even told his disciple that it's not your place to know certain things, you know, what right do we have trying to go through these back doors and being manipulative to try to figure it out on our own, you know? And um, I, I stand with Ecclesiastes with Solomon. Solomon told you himself that he, he learned all these things. Solomon himself got into the occult and he said that knowledge increases sorrow. So even if you were to learn all these things, what would it really benefit you having that just weigh on your conscience like that? You can't do anything about it. You can't really change the world. Even if, even if you were to find out about your third eye and you see all these spirits on these people. I was looking at somebody's profile page on Facebook the other day. And um, I was looking at a picture of them and there's a woman with them in the picture. And I immediately just saw that uh, she had a Jezebel spirit. Now, I mean, it was really heavy. I'm not just saying it just to say it. And um, they looked like an Ahab right under her. And I just kind of grieved in my spirit, like, man, I really wish I need to pray for them. Or I wish I could pray for them. But with all the things the Lord has taught me about her and just the spiritual warfare involved in something like that, I just became so overwhelmed. And the Holy Spirit immediately spoke to me. He said, it's not your battle. Which a discerning is true. It is, in fact, sad. He is in bondage, but that's not your battle. And he reminded me that the Lord um, delegates different assignments like that to different Christians. It's not our responsibility to see what somebody's uh, discerning what somebody's dealing with and automatically want to go into warfare for them. There's a difference between intercession and warfare. OK, you can pray for people all you want to. We have the liberty to do that. But when it comes to warfare for certain individuals, you do not know what you are getting yourself involved in. That person could have a bloodline full of generational covenants and curses in place that you will be fighting against illegally. You do not just jump up and start doing warfare for people. And the Lord told me that immediately to encourage me so I wouldn't feel bad about it because I knew them personally. But he just all, all, uh, also reminded me, like my previous word of marriage that I had, I was assigned to help that individual get free from schizophrenia, from uh, Jezebel, witchcraft in the bloodline, a whole bunch of different stuff. OK, so there are certain people, different Christians that the Lord assigns to people like that for you to pray for them. I don't think the Christians know that yet. I think people meaning well do do just random warfare for people you, you you don't do that <laughs> okay like the lord you know he's he's smart he knows how to um organize things like that in a very strategic way but no that's not your responsibility and everything is not your battle so um but yeah i'm gonna just go ahead and go to the last passage um chapter 14 it says idols in their hearts which, honestly, that is the root cause of somebody using something like the law of attraction. You have idols in your heart. <laughs> um, it's not that the Lord can't give you uh, any of these things that you're interested in having, whether it's like, a you know, weight loss or some assistance with like your body or, you know, maybe a promotion or more money at a job, you know. But uh, for somebody to take this into their own hands and they try to control their own destiny, they try to control their own life. And that's literally what the law of attraction is. If I was to sum it up, it's just you taking control of your own life. Therefore, it ain't and ain't going ever be biblical. 
You don't run your old life. You've been purchased uh, with a price by Jesus Christ shed blood. You belong to him. He dictates your life. You ain't got no business being a Christian using the law of attraction, period. Okay. So verse one, it says, then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, every man of the house of Israel that sets up his idols in his heart and puts the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and comes to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that comes according to the multitude of his idols, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. This is one of my favorite passages that I always mention in uh, way older videos. Um, the Lord is literally telling you that if you try to go through some um, alternative path or some alternative means of divination or prophecy like tarot cards or something you're seeking you know to know the future or you're trying to find your own way to manipulate or control your life or your destiny he said he himself will, will give it to you i will take you i will destroy you through your own idols through your own pursuits through the path that you chose and i'll go ahead and give it to you i'll go ahead and let you be deceived but it's going to be me behind it so it just kind of brings a new perspective this is bible this is the word of god the word of god is true and it brings into proper perspective why people who practice the law of attraction do get manifestation. So, you know, once again, where is it coming from, you know? And the Lord, when he says things like this in scripture, he doesn't always detail by um, um, how he went about doing those things. He can say that I'm going to harden or soften your heart. He doesn't say how he did it, though. But he's the main authority figure that... Uh, that uh, made it to be so. So when he says that he will answer you according to your idols, he could have very well done that through a, through a principality. So you could be getting these things through a demonic principality, not knowing that the Lord gave that principality permission to deceive you because you sinned against his Torah and you're cursing yourself. So he's going to destroy you through your own path. So once again, I, I don't understand why witches and occultists and, you know, Wiccans and pagans and you know, new agers, whatever they want to call themselves, honey, y'all all in the same category of stuff. They're so comfortable leaving Christianity or they're so comfortable pursuing paths like this. When the Lord has already told us in his holy word, he said, I will answer you myself according to your idols. That means that when you get there, honey, you know, you travel in that yellow brick road with the scarecrow and uh, the cowardly lion and Toto and all them other people. When you finally get there, you know who you're going to see? Me. And I'm going to destroy you. You thought that you was getting away from me because you're not following my holy ways. You're not following my laws and my commandments from a Christian perspective, but I still govern all this stuff. So when you get to the, to the, to the end of that road, you're going to see me and it's not going to be a nice appointment. That's what he's telling you. Read it again. His iniquity before his face and comes to the prophet. I, the Lord, will answer him that comes according to the multitude of his idols. So I'm going to speak. I'm going to pick up the phone and text you back. You think it's that, uh, <laughs> it's that other God. You think that is the law of attraction. You think that it's all this other stuff. No, boo, it's me on the other end. Hello, how you doing? I'm sorry, I got all extra, y'all, but you get the point, okay? Father is insulted by it. He has nothing to do with it. He pretty much, this is what he led me to when I just prayed about it. He ain't with it, okay? If there's something that you want, uh, even if it's knowledge about spiritual things and frequencies and stuff like that, ask the Lord to teach you that y'all can, you know, y'all can learn those things together. So that way it won't take away from your intimacy and your fellowship with Jesus and tempt your heart to be seduced away from him or to deviate away from the path while learning those things. So give the Lord permission and the right to teach you those things if he wants to teach you those things. I love stuff like that. So I ask him all the time. But um, as for the law of attraction, No. He's clear. He's, he's not with it. He is king. You're always going to see some type of parable or some type of figure in the Bible, like uh, Esther and uh, the king, her husband. She always, and pay attention to Esther's, um, her role with her husband, how she greeted him, um, how she, um, how she would go to him. She was very humble. She was very polite. She was very meek, very lowly, very respectful. She respected his position as king, even though he was her husband. She said, if it pleases the king to do this, and then she made her request known. So she gave him the initiative and um, the right to 
affirm or deny her request. She respects his authority as king. So we need to do that for the Lord. The Lord has no problem giving you the desires of your hearts, but he's not going to give you something he knows is going to hurt you in the end or something that's not good for you or something that, you know, is coming from a defiled root in your heart of greed or jealousy or covetousness or lust or selfishness. Okay, he's not going to give you something or make something. It's not that he cannot make it happen for you. God can make anything happen for you, honey. He can make you another Solomon if he wanted to. The richest and wisest man alive. And he was still miserable. So it's not that the Lord can't do any of these things. He can do what he wants to do. But he has certain limitations and restrictions on us as his people for a reason. And it's always going to be to protect you. One thing he's really been dealing with my heart about lately, which um, I think is just growth on my part. I don't know where it's coming from, <laughs> but... I used to always feel like, you know, just scared of God and just uh, feeling like, you know, he was always mad at me. Just, it would just randomly come. You know how when you ain't been in the word for a while, and you start getting all these like weird, dark emotions like, oh, my God, I ain't been in the Bible for four days. I know God hates me now. I can feel it in my soul. God hates me. <laughs> it's like it's because you ain't got no light up in your soul. OK, get back in the word. God has not changed or shifted. You have. OK. So his feelings don't change about you. And even if he was mad at you, he would spank you as a son or a daughter. He wouldn't destroy you as an enemy. OK, you're not his enemy. So, um, yeah, he's even just been like, you know, dealing with me in a new way as a daughter. And I don't know how I have this new wineskin mentally now that if I'm not in the word for like a few days, or I'm like distracted doing something else like. I know when I start feeling or thinking things like that, not only is it not true, but, you know, um he's still my dad you know just because you've i don't know swam out into darkness or whatever form of darkness it was you know temporarily it's not going to change how god feels about you if anything he's drawing you back as a loving father into right fellowship with him so that you can not appropriately um feel and think how he really feels and thinks about you so he has not changed you the one who shifted not him so he's still your dad OK, he's still your loving heavenly father. He still wants to bless you. He just wants you to always be in, in right position so that he can bless you. Nothing's going to get in the way of that, like disobedience or rebellion, you know, things like that. So, no, he's still your dad. This stuff, unacceptable. OK, <laughs> be careful what you are uh, learning around here on these YouTube streets and all this other stuff. Um, the Holy Spirit will let you know most times. He just won't give you a piece about it. Like when I was watching the videos, I was like, nah. No, <laughs> I couldn't even get with it. I was like, it couldn't, it, 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 it didn't even really sound as good to me. It wasn't even enough to entice me. I was just like, nah, something ain't right with that. I'm not comfortable being, you know, the wife of Christ and doing something like trying to go, you know, around him. Like that's sneaky stuff. It sounded like a harlot to me. What you trying to do? Cheat on the Lord? Like, what, why are you not consulting me about this? You know, why not come through me and uh, ask these things in my name, you know? I just felt like it was disrespectful. It was dishonorable to him as um just as a master and as a husband, you know, that's your role as a Israelite wife, um, being spiritual Israel. You know, if you read the Bible, how it says a wife should be, you are submissive to your husband. You're submissive to your master. You ain't got no business doing something in a roundabout way or trying to go outside the will of the Lord for anything. It's disrespectful, period. So that's scratched off. I know there's some Christian or there's some law of attraction videos like uh, saying the Bible supports it. The Bible does not support that nonsense. Maybe some aspects of it scientifically the Bible would support. I would agree with that. But the Bible supports it through Christ. And that's the part for some reason they just keep forgetting to miss in that video that they do in. Jesus may have meant that scientifically, but he said, if you ask anything in my name, I will give it to you, meaning it was given. You didn't just randomly get it from the universe, okay? That's God's storehouses. If you randomly get in stuff from the universe without going through Jesus, you are a thief and a robber, and you need to give it back, okay? That's his storehouses shut up in heavenly places that he chooses who he wants to give it to and how much and when. You don't steal it, okay? I think Satan has made this path easily attainable to those who do want to steal because he himself is a robber. <laughs> OK, so, of course, he's going to encourage you to do the law of attraction. He's stealing God's stuff. Yeah. You know, I used to ask. Uh, I, I don't know. I didn't ask anything. I think I had said, like, in an older video, you know, where, where y'all think, you know, when they talk about the Marine Kingdom and stuff, where y'all think these spirits and these. um these uh, water spirits, you know, where they have all these kingdoms set up in these jewels. Said, where do y'all think they get this stuff from? They're stealing it from Christians. <laughs> 
through covenants, through illegal covenants and sin that we don't know that we have with them. They're stealing your stuff. I mean, these are cursed beings. You think the Lord is going to allow cursed beings to just be decked out? No, they're getting it from somewhere, okay? They're stealing that stuff. So, that's pretty much it. Y'all be blessed. And um, I'm going to drink my water and I'll talk to y'all later.